So people often ask in Thunkable X, how do I copy a screen or how do I copy blocks to another screen? And the answer is don't. And here is how you should tackle that problem. Hey friend, Darren here. Two issues you might run into while creating your app. Well, the, the first is needing to display the same type of content at different times. So you have like a grocery list and you want to show your grocery list for Tom and then later you might want to show a grocery list for Jerry. The grocery list will look kind of the same for both but you need to show different items in that grocery list at different times based on Tom or Jerry. The second example is needing to use the same blocks or features on a screen but at different times so sometimes you might want to show parts of the screen or components and then other times you might want to hide those and show some other components so if you're running into issues that kind of sound similar to either of those cases here are some examples of both of those so let's take a look at my app tip trainer for this first one so if we go to the learn screen here I have six modules one two three four five six now, if I go to the first one, I can see there's instructions on how to find 1% of a value. So it says step one, move the decimal two places to the left. Step two, round two, two decimal places. Let's go back. If I go to module two, I can see again, I have two steps there, but there's different instructions. So move the decimal one place to the left and round to two decimal places. Again, let's go to module number three. Here, oh, actually I have three steps. So move the decimal one place to the left, step two, multiply by two, step three, round to do two, two decimal places. So if you are a beginner to Thunkable X or to coding, you might be tempted to make a different screen inside of Thunkable for each of these pages, but you can actually just populate that information dynamically. So have one screen, um, have the same label, and then populate that label with the different instructions based off which module you're in. So there's four steps to do this. Let me show you how I did this in the code. So the first step is to create the content container in the app design. So basically what that means is for me, I was using a, a few labels here and there, and that's what I was dynamically populating. So that was my content, the text container, the label. Um, so I added all of these uh, label containers, and then that is what I am populating. Now you might have remembered that there was a step three in there. And so here in my Thunkable tree, you can see there is a call lesson step three, but I have set the visibility to false. So if I turn that on, you can see that section shows. I can turn it off. So that's something you can, you can consider as well, is, is if you have things that you need to show at some points in time and others that you don't need to, you can set the visibility to be false or be not visible by default. And that's what I did here. And I'll show you in the code how you can update that later. So step one is to create your content container. And then step two is to define the content that you're going to be dynamically showing. So for me, this was a defined set of instructions. So I'm storing all of these in the variable. I have a list stored in that variable, and then each list item represents a section. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The first one, if you remember, had a step one and a step two, so I've defined those here, but step three was false, or step three didn't have anything in it. So in the code, I'm saying uh, that this is false, it's not there, it doesn't exist. And then down here, by contrast, this lesson does have a step three, so I actually have some text in there. So step one is to create the containers for the information. Step two is to define the information that you're going to be displaying. Step three is to set the conditions on which you're going to show the different values. So this is the logic that says show this value or show the other value. 
So for this, I'm actually setting this on the previous screen. You can see I have a variable called selected module, and I'm setting this variable based off the button that I press. So for button one, I set this to one, button 10, I set this to two, three, four, five, six. This is how I know what module I'm in. So then when I go to learn module, and when the screen starts up, I go ahead and set the screen to display that selected module. So I use the variable that I set on the previous screen to now know which lesson I need to show. So do I need to show lesson one, two, three, four, five, or six? And so now that I know what lesson I'm on, I need to actually display the lesson. So this last function, display lesson, updates each of the items. So you can see here I'm setting um, the to the the to do value, the step one, the step two value. And then for step three was where it got a little bit different because I needed to show the section um, at different times. So if step three was defined, I wanted to show it, um, but if it wasn't, I didn't want to show it. And so we have that here. So if it is equal to false, then we want to set step three visibility to false so it doesn't show that section and then the other side of that is if it is defined, so it's not equal to false, well then I'm going to update the text. So I, I update the label to show whatever is stored in step three. That's what's up here. And then I set the visibility of step three to visible. So in conclusion, there are four pieces to do this. You want to first create all of the text labels on the screen to show the information. So whatever component is showing your information Step two is to define the information you want to show at different times. Step three is to set the conditions on which you want to show the different information. And then finally, step four is to actually update that information. So the second use case that we discussed at the beginning was needing to use different blocks or features at different times, but you want it on the same screen so you don't have to replicate code and everything. So let's look at an example of this in my Tip Trainer app. So what we're going to be looking at is the practice screen. And on this screen, I'm basically letting people practice calculating tip percentages so they can adjust the tip percent and then uh, calculate it in their head. They can say what it is and then they can check their answer. What I want to zero in on here is this middle section where it says practicing 18% currently and then it has a slider bar below it. If you can see right now, I can update this slider percent to 10%. I can enter a value, check it, definitely not correct. I can update the percentage again to 20%. What is interesting here is if I go to home go back to my learn screen, but come to a module, and then I go to practice to complete here. Well, now this screen is different. We don't have that sliding bar anymore. And it says I'm practicing 1%, but there's no way for me to change it. And that is intentional because uh, I want people to practice what they learned in the, the module. So here, everything else about the screen works as expected or works as it did before. I can enter amounts, I can check it, but there's no way for me to adjust the tip percentage. And so this is what I'm talking about. When you're using the same screen, all of the blocks, the code behind it stays the same, but I'm just dynamically showing or dynamically letting the user do different things based on how they get to the screen from different places in my app. So the steps to do this are quite similar to what we discussed before, but uh, I'll share with you the caveats. So the first step is actually on our design screen. So if we go to the practice screen, we can look at the middle section and like you saw before, we have the practicing and then a percentage value and then our slider bar. And then similar to our first case, there are some things that I have hidden here. So the practice instructions and the check progress. So here I have these uh, not visible by default. So step one is to add all of the components or all the different sections or, or what have you 
on the screen and then later we'll get to actually dynamically showing those based on how you get to the screen or, or however you want to do it. So step two is to create some kind of variable or flag that will let us know what information we need to show. So here I, I've created a variable and this is what, what I'm using for the screen. Um, it's this variable called current percent and it is set to one right now. And so this, this variable, um, all I'm talking about here is, is creating some type of variable. And the next step, we'll update it. So what this does is we can add logic, look at this variable based on its value, add logic, and then show the different components on the screen. So step one is to add all the components. Step two is to create some type of variable um, to let us know what components to show. And then step three is to add the blocks that will update this variable so that we know what content to show. And so for me, there's uh, two pieces to this. So if I come, if I'm going to the practice screen from the learn module, so that's what this is right here, I'm going to update my, my flag or my variable. And so this set current percent, it sets it to one of these values so that I know what the user should be practicing with. And then I go to that screen. So whenever I click the button to go to the practice screen on the learn module screen, it updates my flag. So then on the home screen, if I press the practice button, I then reset that flag to null. So here I'm resetting it so that my code knows, okay, this value is not defined, do something else. So depending on how I'm accessing that screen, I'm setting my flag or my variables so that I know what to do. So those are the conditions on which I want to show the different blocks. So step two is to create a variable so that we can know later on what to do. Step three is to actually define the logic by which you want to update that variable. And then step four, as you would expect, the last step is to actually update the screen to show what you want when you want it. So back on my practice screen, um, here I have when the screen starts, I, I call this function check for learn module. And this, this is what we want, this is what we need. So here is that function, it has a conditional statement. So here's my flag. If it is equal to null, remember that's what I did when I access it from the home screen. Well then we set the percent slider to 10, we set the percent slider to visible so that they can adjust the slider percent. And then we set the other two items, the check progress, that was a container that shows the check boxes and then the instructions, we set both of those to false. So those were needed when we access it from the learn module page. And then uh, on the other side of that, if the current percent is not equal to null, it is defined, something is in it. Well, then we set the visibility of my slider to false so that the user cannot adjust the slider. We define the percent amount so that they can only practice that one percentage. And then we set the check progress section to true. So in summary, if you need to use different blocks or features on the same screen at different times, four steps. So you wanna add all of the components that you want to have on that screen to the screen. You can hide the ones you don't want at the beginning or by default or in one state. Step two is to create a variable that will indicate what state you want the screen to be in. Step three is to create the conditions or the logic that will update the flag so that we know how to show the screen. And then step four is to actually update the screen. So define all those blocks that will let us know which section or which features to turn on, and which features to turn off. Well, hey friend, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I definitely enjoyed sharing with you some of these things. And uh, I wanna ask you to do something. I don't know if this is weird or whatnot, but um, this app that I demoed today, I actually made, and I recently released it to both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. The app is called Tip Trainer, and it's designed to help you calculate tips in your head. So I was sitting at a restaurant and I do this all the time where I'm trying to calculate a tip so I can give my waiter and my waitress a tip. And I always pull out my phone to do the calculations and I'm always kind of embarrassed. 
um, just because I studied math in college. I got my degree in mathematics, but I'm not very disciplined in doing some of these small, simple calculations in my head. I always go to a calculator. Um, so I wanted a way to actually practice that, and I couldn't find a way to do it, um, or I couldn't find an app to help me practice that, so I decided to make it in Thunkenbook X. So you can download this app, you can try it out, you can see the features that we went over today, and I would really appreciate that. Well, that is all I have for you. Thanks for watching, and happy coding.